breaking the wall to STEM for girls in rural areas. Leila Bashen, empowering girls in rural areas through STEM Morocco. When I was a young girl, I was friends with a young girl that was called Barka. Barka and I had many things in common. We were both 10. We, uh, we both played dolls, and uh, our dads made uh, most of our decisions. But Mbarka and I had so many differences. I was living with my parents while she moved to the city to work as a maid. I um, went to school while she didn't have uh, had the chance to, to go to school and attend subjects, scientific subjects, even though when my brother was trying to challenge us on many subjects, she was smarter than me. And later on, uh, I, uh, I started my studies as an engineer. I graduated and went back to visit her in her home uh, countryside. And this is Mbarka with her. She is now a single mom of three daughters living the exact same challenges. So we started our projects for girls like Mbarka. So mainly what we decided to do is to create a, a safe environment for girls living in rural areas where they can thrive and learn skills uh, while being uh, proven to their parents that they can be more than maids or uh, uh, getting married at an early age. Uh, we started the selection process by uh, talking to the teachers. So we moved to remote areas where there is no electricity, no water, and then we, uh, we talked to teachers there, and then we convinced them to uh, take part of the program. We did a selection process, uh, and then we trained those teachers, around 500 teachers trained around the country, and then we give them, gave them free equipment so that they can form teams and participate in our uh, tournaments in our robotics tournaments and uh, some t somehow it was like not accessible for uh, those uh, those kids and then we asked them to create teams inclusive teams we didn't want to exclude boys because bo both boys and girls are needed in uh, in the world of tomorrow so we asked them to look for the the best uh, uh, the ones who needed the most the program and then they hosted weekly workshops with the, their students to prepare them uh, for the competition. The competition is a three parts project. So they had to build robots to, uh, to create some missions. They had to also define a problem uh, that is related to a specific theme, whether it is related to uh, energies, to space, or, or whatever the theme is for the year. And then they had to talk to experts. It is engineers, researchers, uh, teachers, their parents, or even like the guy who is uh, selling maybe some <laughs> some food next door, uh, they had to go out of the school and then try to uh, to find uh, uh, solutions and share th these solutions with those people who need it the most to see what is the feedback and kind of work in a design engineering process. And then they had to go to competitions. Uh, competitions is our events where we are celebrating those teams uh, the way that we celebrate maybe the football players or celebrities, so that scientists can get this re the reward they are looking for. And then some of them were even able to travel abroad and go to international competitions. And more than that, all of them were winners because of all of the learning they had I in the meantime. So I can spend here maybe hours talking about all of the things that happened during the year. So it's uh, we just started the, the, the this project uh, for one year, but I can tell you about the 120 schools that we reached in only one year. Uh, I can also tell you about the involvement of girls in the project. We reached 54% participation <coughs> girls in the project. I can also talk to you about the 70% engaged parents in those remote areas where they didn't believe even that it was possible for their girls to do something more than uh, just cook. Uh, and then I can also talk to you about the interest in STEM uh, when we reached uh, a high percentage uh, and we had re uh, like made a, a great impact study. And I can also talk to you about creativity. Now, some of you may be received a uh, maybe the front row. I don't know if you were able to make some ducks, but uh, uh, if you weren't able to make a duck, so uh, just out of maybe six bricks, we can get like 
915 million uh, combinations. And I can let you do the math if we give the, the kids 500 million pieces of bricks. How, how much creative uh, solutions can we get? Or I can just give you the opportunity to see how a whole village went out to celebrate those li little girls coming back to, with a trophy uh, to their village. Thank you. Thank you so much, Leila. I'm not sure if everyone can see it, especially in the back, but she's also wearing amazing Lego shoes, all in brand. <laughs> but now, yeah, let's take some questions. Let's see. Yeah, Kari. So parents can be engaged in, any, in many ways. Some of them uh, attend the workshops and uh, or the trainings. Uh, sometimes we uh, kind of like uh, invite maybe uh, uh, some some alumni to talk about like where they are now and how they are uh, they are uh, working uh, or in colleges. And parents are there sitting and listening, but they can also involve like for example for when the the, the kids need to go to a city, a different city, for example, uh, they have to like help them look for transportation they have uh, to to do the logistics uh, so they th we we ask them to get involved as they want so uh, there we we kind of like um, uh, give them some uh, some uh, some uh, some uh, leads and then they can choose the how they want to help yeah monica please Thank you, Laila. You mentioned that the kids have to go and, and talk to the local communities as they're doing their projects. Can you tell us a little bit more about how they integrate those conversations into what they're doing? Yeah, exactly. So uh, one part of what they are doing is uh, a project. So they have to choose like a specific problem and then they have to do research. So they, whether it is on internet, whether it is like going out, like for example, I can give you the example of one one student who um, he's in a mountain and we they had the, a problem with medicine, like getting the medicine could take three hours to, to get that. And then they had to uh, to go to uh, to the community, to the village and ask people how to get who do they get the, the medicine and then try to record those uh, those uh, findings uh, by ex uh, exploring how this uh, this affects the, the life of, uh, of the villages they can also like visit like um, maybe if they are next to the city and they want to explore for example logistics they can go to the port and then ask uh, experts of the port like for example the driver the com uh, the, the truck driver uh, how much time do we uh, do you wait before you can unload your material and then they can get the records so they have they are behaving like scientists in a way where they are uh, looking for evidence in the in the field great uh, Stanley I saw your question but if you allow we do ladies first yeah Rosalia I have a comment um, it's wonderful to put the girls in in the society working together for a better future and um, uh, my suggestion is to transform that one thing you are always doing, uh, because you mentioned creativity also. So had um, a transform STEAM to st uh, STEM to STEAM always, because you are, uh, y you know, motivating them for a better world. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the remark. But actually, one part of that we are working on is uh, the STEAM because when they are in front of the jury and doing their project, they have to do uh, like a play or a song to present their uh, presentation. And this is the STEAM part. The STEAM part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Leila. <laughs>